Okay, so this is your laboratory exam for Chem 101. Please listen also so that we will have uh, the corrections later if ever meron. Now let's have the first question here. What laboratory technique refers to separating mixtures by removing a liquid layer that is free of a precipitate or the solids deposited from a solution? So again, a uh, laboratory technique for separating mixtures. And then the, per, uh, the goal here is just to remove the upper layer, the liquid layer, na wala yung precipitate. The correct answer here is... Um, we have here decantation. Yung decantation kasi, di ba, we will let the solids or the precipitate settle at the bottom and then we will just get rid of the liquid above. So yun yung decantation. Okay, next um, we have number two. What is the process used to separate solids from liquids or gases using a filter medium that allows the fluid to pass through but not the solid. From the question itself, class, you will see there the hint. And then we have here the filter medium. But definitely that will be filtration for you. Okay, Filtration for the process of separating this mixture. Automatic na yan siya. Next, what laboratory apparatus is described as a graduated glass tube with a tap at one end or for delivering known volumes of a liquid, especially in titrations? Um, if you look at the question, you have a tube with a graduation. When you say graduation, merong mga linya-linya para sa measurement. And then, meron siyang tap at one end. Meron siyang parang... Para, oh, what do you call that? Parang gripo at the end. You have to close or open it. And most of the time, this glass tube is used for titration. So we, ha uh, we have burettes here or buree for this question. So mona siya ang pinaka description jud ni burette. Okay? Next, which of the following laboratory apparatus is used to reduce the particle size of a substance. So that's no other than the mortar and pestle. If we want to reduce the size, for example, of our solid substances or our powder, we will just place it in a mortar and we will use the pestle to reduce the particle size. Next, what methods refers to separating molecules having different densities by spinning them in solution around an axis or in a centrifuge rotor at high speed. So we don't have other apparatus there for this. We have the centrifugation or pag sinabi kasing magsaseparate tayo ng uh, mixtures via the, their difference in density. So we'll be using the centrifuge class. Ipapasok natin siya sa centrifuge and iikot siya in an axis using a centrifuge rotor. And then after that, magsisettle sa bottom yung solid and that's it. We have already separated the components of the mixture. The process is called centrifugation. Next, which of the following involves direct vaporization and condensation of a solid without formation of an intermediate liquid phase? What is this direct vaporization and condensation of a solid without... Ah, okay. Solid padulong sa gas, syempre, we have the sublimation. So even in the lecture, we have this type of question of... Iba lang yung pagka um, sabi. Okay, so that again is sublimation. Hindi na siya dadaan sa liquid phase niya. And then we have which of the following involves the process by which water changes from a liquid to a gas or vapor. Again, liquid tapos magiging gas. Siyempre, the process is called evaporation. Next, which of the following device is used in the laboratories to incubate samples in water maintained at a constant 
temperature. Again, which of the following device is used in the laboratories to incubate samples in water maintained at a constant temperature? So definitely this is the water bath. So nasa activity one, activity number one natin yan. Kapag uh, gusto natin initin yung ating samples at a specific temperature, we will be using the water bath. Next, which of the following is a relatively safe way to heat flammable organic liquids? Again, safe way para sa organic liquids natin kasi kapag mag-direct heat kasi pag merong flame involved, then um, that will be a problem kasi pwedeng magkaroon ng sunog. So what will be the answer here? It's the steam bath. This is the, uh, for us, consider nato siya as safe way if we want to heat uh, flammable liquids. Kasi walang direct heat, um, the heating will just be coming from the steam produced by the water inside the bath or the water bath. Pero specifically, we call it the steam bath. Next, which of the following can be used to extract or deliver small amounts of liquids? So the goal here is to extract or deliver small amounts of liquids. We have, syempre, the pipettes. The pipettes class, we have two types of pipettes to contain and to deliver. And we use them if we want to get small amounts of liquids from one container and then we'll be transferring it to another container, okay? Next, how many significant figures are in 1.725754? As you can see, we only have non-zero digits here and that means na silang lahat ay significant. So, pila na sila kabuok? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So, we have 7 here. Next, how many significant figures are in 70,301? Uh, automatically, the non-zero digits are significant while the two zeros there are considered as in-between zeros. And sa rules sa significant figures, they are also significant. So all in all, we have five significant figures here. Next, how many significant figures are in 0 0.0000369 kilograms? The correct answer is three. Only the three, six, and nine are significant. All the leading zeros are not significant. So again, we call this leading zeros. Hindi sila significant. Next, um... You have a rock with a volume of 15 cubic centimeter and a mass of 45 grams. What is its density? So remember, the density is computed just like this. Density is equal to mass over volume. So the mass is 45 grams based on the given and the volume is 15 cubic centimeter. So you just divide the class 45 divided by 15 is 3. Pero um, this one is division. So we need to follow the list number of significant figures. So we have 1, 2, 1, 2. Kailangan natin ng dalawang significant figure. So let's just place point is 0 here. 3, 3 grams per, uh, per cubic centimeter. So the correct answer is letter B. Okay. Next, convert 602 grams to milligrams. So how are we going to convert this? We have 602 grams times sa isang grams class, meron tayong 1,000 milligrams. So let's cancel the grams. So 602 times 1,000 is 612,000 milligrams. Um, where is that? That's letter A. Okay. Again, that's letter A. 
Next, we have a barrel of oil is exactly 42 gallons. How many liters of oil is in the barrel? Ano bang ginamit niyo dito na, ano, um, what you call that, conversion factor? We have 42 gallons times um, sa isang gallon. Ginamit niyo na, ano, wait ha, let me check. I'm not the one who made the exam kasi. Wait lang. Baka magkaiba. Oops. 3.7. We have 4.54609 liters. Let's cancel the gallon. So 42 times 4.54609 is 190.93578 liters. Okay. I think gipotol ni siya 4.54 lang gigamit ani. 42 times 4.54. 190 gigamit ani ng conversion factor man. Uh -huh. 0.2. Wait, let me check. 42 divided by 0.26. 161 158 158 yeah kani ang gigamit lang conversion factor na gigamit ani is 1 liter is 20.0.264172 gallon so the answer here is 158.264172 158.98 uh, liters or this is 159 liters. So the answer here is 159 liters. That's my problem if um, hindi, hindi tayo nag-set ng conversion factor natin na gagamitin talaga. Kasi like this one, the other way around, you'll have a discrepancy between the answers. Let me check. Yeah. But the answer there is 159 liters. So I was actually looking for the conversion factor na ginamit dito sa question na ito. Next, which of the following describes how close a measurement is to the true value of the quantity that was measured? So always remember, pag uh, how close to the true value is, it is referring to accuracy. Next, convert 75 degrees Celsius to Fahrenheit. So this is Fahrenheit is equal to um, 9 over 5 times degrees Celsius plus 32. So this is 9 over 5 times 75 plus 32. 9 over 5 is 1.8 times 75 plus 32 is 167 degrees Fahrenheit. 167. So this one, letter C. Next, uh, how about this? Convert 387 degrees Fahrenheit to degrees Celsius. So this is the other way around. So degrees Fahrenheit minus 32 times 5 over 9. So this is 387 minus 32 times 5 over 9. 
is ilan niya? 387 minus 32, that's 355 times 5 divided by 9 is 197.22 degrees Celsius. Let's look for it sa choices. 197.22, that is letter A. Okay? Yeah, that is letter A. Next. 89 degrees Celsius to Kelvin. So this is just Kelvin equals degrees Celsius plus 273. I think nagamit ng 0.15 dito sa answer. So 89 plus 273.15. 89 plus 273.15 is 362.15 Kelvin. Let's look at the choices. This is <clears throat> letter B. Okay? Wait lang, ha? Let's clear this one. Next, predict the number of protons. We have here 27, 13, alumi aluminum positive 3. But the question only asked for... Proton. Always remember class, pag proton, you will just look at the atomic number. And the atomic number is this one, ang nasa baba, 13. So the answer is letter A. Next, predict the number of electrons for 3517 chlorine. Take note, wala itong charge. So kung walang charge, the number of protons is equal to the number of electrons. You will still look at the atomic number itong sa baba. So the answer is 17. Next, predict the number of neutrons for oxygen 16, 8, um, negative 2. Uh, since neutrons ito, di ba, we will just subtract atomic mass minus atomic number. So 16 minus 8, syempre, it is 8. Next, which of the following refers to the number of protons in the nucleus of each atom of an element? Nasabi ko na kanina, pag sinabing number of protons, always yan siya, atomic number. Si atomic mass, protons plus neutrons. The family, remember the family is the vertical grouping in the periodic table, patayo. Ang period ay horizontal, pahiga. Okay? And then ions, syempre, they are our charged atoms. Kapag kasi atoms nagkaroon ng charge, we call them ions. Next, what is the basic unit of an element that can enter into a chemical combination? Syempre, wait lang. We have atoms. Basic unit. Basic unit ng ating matter or ng ating element. No other than atoms. Next, the density of a sulfuric acid in a certain car battery is 3.41 grams per ml. Calculate the mass of 7.50 ml of the liquid. So again, density is equal to mass over volume. But we are looking for the mass here. So if we derive the formula, mag Crisscross tayo, baba natin si mass, and it will become density times volume. So density here is 3.41 grams per ml. Multiplied sa volume, which is 7.50 ml, we can cancel the ml here. We will be left with the grams, but the answer is 3.41 times 7.50 is 25.57 5 grams. 25.575. What's your answer here? Huh? Anyway, hindi nyo makita yung correct answer sa choices. Yung pinakamalapit. This is 25.56. Yan yung pinakamalapit sa tama na answer. Okay? Next. Which of the following statement is our True, precision is independent of accuracy. This is actually correct. Accuracy is how repeatable a measurement is. Precision is how... This one is not 
correct by the way because when you say how repeatable a measurement is we are actually referring to precision because they are agree with each other they are close to each other next precision is how close to a true volume value to its true value so this is also wrong because nabaliktad na sila this one is referring to accuracy so the uh, true man so the following statement is our true that's the first statement next we have here for example if in laboratory activity obtain a weight measurement of 3.2 kilograms for a given substance but the actual or known weight is 10 kilograms after conducting the procedure, you weigh a given substance five times and get 3.2 kilograms each. How will you interpret the result? So, um, nag-weigh siya five times, no? 3.2, 3.2, Pero the true value is 10 kilograms. So, how are we going? To evaluate this, syempre, since pareha silang lahat, this one is precise. But if we look at the accuracy, syempre, not accurate. So let's look at the choices. Your measurement is accurate, is automatically wrong. Your measurement is not accurate. In this case, your measurement is not close to the known value but is very precise so definitely this one is correct your measurement is not accurate in this case your measurement is close so this is wrong because remember close to the known value that is automatically wrong Siyempre, the, the fourth one is also wrong kasi hindi nga siya accurate so this one also the measurements obtained are precise and accurate. Hindi siya accurate but precise. Kasi pareha silang lahat, they are close to each other, they agree with each other, so precise. Next, carry out the following operations as if they were calculations of experimental results and express each answer in the correct units with the correct number. Oh, though we don't have correct unit here, but yes, we, we can follow the significant Figure. So let's just use our calculator. 8.4 times 10 raised to the power of 3 plus 3.1 times 10 raised to the power of 3. That is, my calculator does not give me a scientific notation na answer. This is 11,500. So the choices are in scientific notation. Thus, we can convert this. We have here the decimal point. 1. 2, 3, and 4. So, magiging 1.15 times, yeah. This is 11,500, right? 1, 2, 3, 4. 1.15 times 10 raised to the power of 4. Ano naman na yun? Wala answer? Oh. Wala answer. Sige, answer ninyo ka na This one, 1.15 times 10 raised to the power of 3. 11.5 times 10 raised to the power 1. of 1.15. This one. 1.15 po. We, we have 11.15, 11. 11. ma'am, yung sa akin. Okay. We have the 11.5 times 10 raised to the power of 3. This is supposedly correct. Tama siya, no? Kasi 11.5 times 10 raised to the power of 3, that is equivalent to 11,500. But the, our problem here is hindi kasi siya nakafollow sa correct rule ni scientific notation. Yeah. Pero kung kaniman po good, this one is not correct kasi this is not equivalent to 11,500. So this is 11.5. We will just consider this one 11.5 times 10 raised to the power of 3. Okay. Next, we have carry out the following operations as if they were calculations of experimental results and express each answer in the correct units with the correct number of significant figures. So let's just use again our calculator 3.26 times 10 raised to the power of negative 5 times 7.88 times 10 raised to the power of 3. Um, again, 
My calculator does not express it in scientific notation. So this is 0 0.25688. Um, mulang naka 0 point na. So let's just move. This one becomes 2.50. What happened here? 2.57. Yeah, let's just use two decimal places kasi yeah, we have three significant figures times 10 raised to the power of negative one. Do we have answer? Two point. Oh, yeah, we have 2.57 times 10 raised to the power of negative one. Okay. Next. You override the binini mom charm. You override. But anyway, wait lang hara medyo mahaba. Um, isa -isa na lang nato we have the watch glass, the steering rod, the alcohol lamp. This is, I guess, a thermometer. And then we have here a funnel, centrifuge, beaker, mortar, and pestle, the reagent bottle, and lastly, we have the separatory funnel. So we have number one, used for heating, sterilization, and combustion in a laboratory. Ang ginagamit natin dito for heating. Siyempre, let's go back here. We have the alcohol lamp. Nagamit din siya for sterilization, especially um, during inoculation of bacteria in a Petri dish with the agar. Ginagamit si alcohol lamp to keep the surroundings um, sterile. Okay, next. Used in liquid, liquid extractions to separate the components of a mixture into two immiscible solvent phases of different densities. So we have here the separatory funnel. Si separatory funnel, ginagamit siya to separate mixtures of two immiscible liquids. Pag sinabing immiscible class, yung liquids na hindi nagahalo, Sample yung oil at saka water. Hindi sila naghahalo. So if we want to separate the two, we use the separatory funnel. Next, a laboratory device that is used for the separation of fluids, gas, or liquid based on density. If it is based on density, that will be the centrifuge. Ayan. Ayan. So this will be for the centrifuge. Next. We have used for pouring liquids or powders through a small opening and for holding the filter paper in filtration. This will be the funnel. Ayan, this will be the funnel class. Uh, fa the funnel is used uh, to facilitate pouring of liquids if we want to transfer it from one container to another. Especially if the next container or both containers have small openings. And during filtration, we place the filter paper here. Okay? So, ginagamit din siya. Next, a tool used in laboratories to measure temperature with accuracy. Siyempre, thermometer. Wait lang, hirapan lang ako mag ayan, navigate. But anyway, walang ibang ano dyan, ter thermometer. Used to mix chemicals and liquids. Mix. Yeah, this is the steering rod. If we want to mix the chemicals, if we want to steer it, syempre we use the steering rod. Cylindrical container used to store, mix, and heat liquids in the laboratory. What was that again? Cylindrical? What? Wala? Wait lang. Okay. Sobra ba? Ilan ang ano? One, two, three. Uh, anyway, this one is... Asa na ito? Na-add to? Nawala lagi. Nabutang na ako. Ay, sorry. This one is the beaker. Okay? The beaker, cylindrical container used to store, mix, and heat liquids in the laboratory. That's the use of a beaker. Next, use as a surface for heating a small amount of substance and as cover uh, for a beaker. This one is the watch glass. Ayan. Ito yan just the first Pinagagamit natin yan si watch glass mag-cover ng beaker. And if we want to heat small samples, pwede din ilagay dyan. Pag-konti lang talaga. Next, 
Use to crush dried and mix solid substances. Siyempre, we can kalusad. Ayan. We have here the mortar and the pestle. And lastly, intended to contain chemicals in liquid or, or powder form for laboratories and stored in cabinets or in shelves. Shelves, siyempre, the reagent bottle. So all in all, this is 10 points. Next, um, write the chemical formula of the following. Chemical formula, let's have this one one by one. We have lead, lead 4, so positive 4 siya. And then nitrite is NO2. Nitrite is negative 1, so definitely we will have to do the crisscross. So for number 1, the correct answer is PB. And then ilagay natin sa loob ng open and close parenthesis si NO2 and sa labas class si 4. That's the correct answer for number 1. Next, magnesium bromate. Magnesium is Mg. The charge is positive 2. Bromate is BrO3. The charge is negative 1. So definitely we will also do the crisscross kasi this is not equal to 0. So, the correct answer for number 2 is Mg. No need to write 1, ha? Pag 1 lang yung kanyang subscript. And then BRO3. And then sa labas, C2. Now, number 3 is a molecular compound. Meron siyang prefixes. So, diretsyo na ito siya class. Di means meron kang dalawang chlorine. Hepto means meron kang 7 na oxygen. And then, ammonium phosphate. Ammonium is NH4. This is a polyatomic ion. Ang charge niya ay positive 1. And phosphate is another polyatomic ion, PO4. Ang charge niya ay negative 3. So, positive 1 plus negative 3 is negative 2. So, we have to do the crisscross. So, if you are going to write the correct chemical formula of ammonium phosphate, the ammonium will have the 3. So, ilagay mo siya sa loob na parenthesis. So, sa C3 ay nasa labas and PO4, one lang ang subscript niya, no need class to write it inside the open and close parenthesis. So, this is the correct answer, MH43 PO4. And then, we have here, potassium permanganate. Potassium is K, that's positive 1. Permanganate is MnO4. This is negative 1. So, positive 1 plus negative 1 is equal to 0. No need to do the crisscross. We just need to combine the symbols. So, for number 5, that is KmnO4. And then, Lastly, we have write the chemical name of the following inorganic compounds. So this is um, silicon and then carbon. Um, we call this silicon carbide. Okay, silicon carbide. The charge of the silicon there is positive 2. Um, and then... We have the carbon, uh, no, the, the silicon here is positive 4, and then the carbon is negative 2. So, nag crisscross yan sila, kaya may 2 tapos gi, basig malibog mo. This is silicon. And then, this is carbon here. The charge here is positive Four, this is negative 2. Nag-crisscross kasi, kasi yan sila class. Magiging Si2, C4 kasi yan siya. Pero um, this one is the empirical formula. So ni-reduce siya. Di ba pag nag-reduce tayo, Si, uh, hanapin natin yung fac common factor nila. So that is 2. Magiging Si, C2 yan siya. So this is called silicon carbide. And then NaCN. Na is sodium. And then CN is cyanide. So, diretsya na siya sodium cyanide. No need to use prefixes because sodium is a metal. Now, this time we need to use the prefixes here because phosphorus and sulfur are both non-metal. So, 4 means tetra. So, tetraphosphorus. And then 9 is nona. That is sulfur. sulfur so, we call it sulfide. Next. This is H2O2. Para, para, parati ito example sa mga lectures natin. No? We call this hydrogen peroxide. 
And then CaCO3, this is carbon. I sorry, carbon calcium. That is a metal, so no need to use prefixes. And CO3 is called carbonate. So this is calcium carbonate. So that's it for your laboratory exam. Any 